My name is Graham Cooper. I'm a senior in the visual arts department, and next semester I will be graduating with my degree concentration in graphic design. I was asked to demonstrate a technique in the field of graphic design that would be usable to my peers, my colleagues, and in our field, there are numerous technical skills that can be learned or taught. However, I want to cover one of the most basic aspects of graphic design. That's how to package a logo to be sent off to a client. Too often, designers send off incomplete files, wrong files, or corrupted files. This can result in unhappy clients, unhappy designers, and ultimately that means an unhappy you. One way to avoid these scenarios is to create some sort of standard for logo completion and delivery. In the next five minutes, I'll show you a foolproof method of getting your client's logo sent off to them with all of their variations included. The first step to packaging your logo is going to be folder setup. Now, create a new folder and we'll call it logo. Just like that. Inside of that folder, you want to create two separate folders, one called raster and one called vector. The raster folder is going to be where you save your pixel-based copies of that logo. Pixel-based copies are limited by size, and if trying to be blown up, they will get distorted. And then your vector folder is where you're going to store the line-based versions of your logo. Vector drawings can be scaled to any size. Now that you have your folder set up, let's take a look at our logo. So I will be using the logo that I developed for my brand, Milk Toast. The first thing that you want to do is to save your original vector file into the vector folder as seen here, logo mark. Typically this is going to be an Illustrator file, but at some point you may use a different piece of software. Following that, you're going to want to save all additional vector copies of your logo. That will be EPS, SVG, and PDF. Once you're done, your vector folder should look something like this. So you have four copies inside of your vector folder. And now we're getting to the meticulous part. Saving your logo in raster format permanently sets its usable scale. This means that if your client decides that they want their logo to be blown up and put on a banner, that raster logo you sent them may be too small and will become pixelated or even unre unrecognizable. So pay close attention here. You'll want to go to File, Export, and Save for Web. In this window, we have quite a few options, but in the top right, you're going to select PNG24. This is going to be your first file. And then you're going to set the desired size in the section below. Here, I've chosen 4,000 pixels for my large copy. Once you hit save, rename the file to logomark underscore large. Walk through the same steps again, but instead of 4,000, use 600 as the size. Then you're going to want to save that copy as logomark small. For JPEG, you can follow the same instructions, but instead of using the PNG24 setting in the top right, you're going to select JPG High and make sure to change the quality from regular to maximum as I have there. Then save both a large and a small JPG file. At the end, your raster folder should look something like this. Again, four copies. Now your logo folder is completely ready to be sent off to client. So you have a happy client and a non-stressful future. I hope that this was an insightful demonstration for all of my peers out there and for anyone else who may watch this video.